Hello everybody, welcome to Masala Chai with your boy Adrian. Welcome back to another episode. Or never mind, not welcome back. Welcome to the very first episode of my podcast. Um I have been told that I have a very podcasty voice, uh, and I do also have the proper equipment for a podcast. So I decided to make one for myself. Because why not? Uh, uh, hopefully this is something that you guys might enjoy. It's something that I'm doing out of my comfort zone. Generally, I don't do podcasts alone. Uh, initially, I thought this could just be between me and whoever is listening. But as a normal podcast usually evolves, eventually I'll have guests in and we'll do the common uh, podcast with other people kind of interview vibes. But as of now, you only got me. So yeah, um, it's me. Uh, please do let me know if you like the video. If you don't want the video, I can also do that. I can just put a static photo and just the audio. Some people might not be watching this on YouTube or on Instagram Live. Sorry, not Instagram Live. I mean Instagram uh, Reels or whatever it is. Uh, so you might not be able to see the video anyway. But if you are watching it as on YouTube, then do leave a comment in the comment section below. Uh, for Spotify listeners, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, this is going to be a very, very awesome new experience uh, for me. Although I have done previous podcasts with my friend Kevin and I did do a few podcasts with ADA production, uh, digital production uh, over on their account. Go ahead and check that out if you want. Um, but anyway, today's topic is going to be a favorite topic of mine, which is filmmaking. Um, I've already made a video on this on my cycle uh, documentary release. And a year or two before that, I made a video on how to make movies, which I, I'm not the most credible for because I haven't made a movie except for my short film, which is uh, which is Cycle. So I realize how invalid that video is. But today, I'm not going to be talking about how to make movies, really. Uh, I'm just going to be talking about my, my film Cycle, really. Uh, it's not a promotion, so don't feel too, uh, you know, prolonged or... or or you're forced to watch it. I mean, go ahead and watch it, please do. But uh, don't feel like you have to. Um, the stuff I'll be talking today is not going to be quite parallel to the ones that I've talked about in the documentary. Uh, but it's more like reflections. And probably what I'm going to be doing in the future with my future projects. For instance, the one thing that people are commonly misunderstanding is uh the shark bait entertainment and port portamax films they're they're both my company they're they're not proper production houses uh i i'm not paid for for cycle i wasn't paid for cycle because why i i made cycle i i was the person a person who gave birth to it uh i wrote the story i directed it i wrote the screenplay uh i pretty much did everything from from top to bottom but of course uh stuff like during set filming and all that of course i couldn't do that alone it was just impossible um ignoring that uh pretty much pretty much it was just my a solo man production and uh and that's not going to change anytime soon because of covid and um uh, most of the people i worked with before are obviously not here with me so that's going to be a bit tough to top my next project, which I'll be working on uh, now, actually, I finished the script. I'm still working on some final touches. Uh, I'm, I'm changing stuff, some minor stuff here and there. Uh, that's pretty much what I'm doing with my with my next project. I'm not going to reveal too much because I think one mistake that I made with my previous project was I, I revealed too much and um, I kept giving out teases and all that. But at the end, at the end of the day, there was there was nothing to back that off. I, I promised to release cycle so many times and never happened. So I'm just going to hit this one uh, quite surprisingly, just on the spot. When it's done, I'll let you guys know. I'll release a teaser and then I'll post it immediately. Um, maybe maybe a few subtle hints depending on where I am. But I don't want to celebrate too early. That's, that's something that I've learned the hard way. Uh, it's not worth it. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I wanted to say about Cycle, really. Uh, it, it was a really interesting project for me because it was my very first short film, and I decided to do it very extravagantly, meaning that I didn't want to take uh, a random iPhone and just film it with really shaky hands. I, want, I wanted to be um, a quite, quite professional Hollywood-esque uh, short film because that, that's how I pictured, that's how I imagined my, my, my talent, my, my skill. Uh, and hopefully that's that is what I've delivered. If people, uh, depending on how what you've seen from it, if you think it's confusing or if you think it's not good, then please do let me know because I I would love to know because a filmmaker, uh, all I can do is make the film. You know, 
But what is the film for? It's it's a way of expressing my emotions, a way of expressing ex- ex- expressing a story that I would like to tell the world. And uh, and uh, if you guys can watch it and tell me how how you liked it, if you didn't like it, I that would appreciate. I would really really appreciate that because honesty is the best policy. It truly is. And uh, honest opinions and criticisms are only going to make my stuff better. So uh, yeah, uh, funny thing actually, because my next my next project is horror. Uh, I, I actually wanted to do this quite early on so I can release it in on time for uh, for Halloween. But clearly Halloween is in like three days. No, four. And that's not that's not going to be possible. Uh, <laughs> but regardless, uh, actually, my friend uh, Jesh, uh, I'm not sure if he's listening to this. If you are, then hey, uh, he, he kind of asked me, why are you always doing the thriller, horror, psychological thriller kind of uh, genres? And that was a very valid question. The thing is, comedy is quite hard to work with. It is something that I've always wanted to do. Comedy is is pretty much my area because I love to enjoy in my sets. Even I'm pretty sure you guys saw if you've watched the cycle documentary in the beginning, there was a blooper slash gag reel. And in that, it was all fun and games. We were enjoying in set. Uh, there were a few times where I was quite serious. I was like, yo, you know, you got to film this. You got to do that. But other times I was just being myself. I was just being the funny, quirky guy I am. And, uh, and that just you know, lights up the set that lightens the mood and it really makes the people working with me want to work with me. And, uh, and that's, that's kind of what you're, you, well, it's kind of what you need when you're aspiring to become a, a, an actor or a director, a producer, whatever it is. Um, and, and that's where I'm working towards, uh, thankfully. And uh, ignoring that, there's not much you can do when it comes to like uh, getting stuff wrong on set. Stuff always happens. Uh, that's kind of like, that's what uh, school tries to prepare you, but really they don't. Uh, if there's one thing I've learned here in the army, it's that uh, you need to be uh, very, very spontaneous. Uh, spontaneous stuff is is quite quite a requirement in life. Uh, if you're not spontaneous, you're you're gonna be suffering a lot, or maybe not suffering. It would be the wrong word to use, but you would be feeling a bit of a lag or. A bit, a bit of difficulty, really, with coping with things or with dealing with things, really. Solving problems on the spot is going to be a bit more tough when you're not able to be spontaneous. Uh, but being spontaneous at the time, it's not the same as being fast. You know, being fast and being thorough are two different things. Uh, generally, I like to prepare uh, a lot of a lot of things that would go wrong. I, I tend to use Murphy's Law with me all the time. Uh, even though Murphy's Law can seem a bit negative to some people, it might feel like it's the worst case scenario. Uh, Murphy's Law, if people don't know, is that if something can go wrong, it will go wrong. Uh, it, it's kind of an interesting theory, for, really, because uh, it, it it just it just tells you that you know things will go right, but if if there's a chance it will go wrong, there's a chance it will go wrong. Uh, so don't always eliminate the most impossible choices. I mean, by impossible, I don't mean like aliens coming down tomorrow and destroying your PC and running away with your CPU. You know, that's that's not going to happen. But uh, I mean, it could happen. It's just it's not impossible. It's just improbable. So there's that there's that idea of of um, being reasonable and uh, realistic as well as being uh, quite, you know, quite specific with what's going to happen and what's not going to happen. So Murphy's Law is really, really helpful when you're doing uh, set stuff with uh, recording, filming, shot taking, uh, pre-production planning, and especially post-production. If stuff doesn't go right, if you're missing shots, if a, if a file is corrupted, you got to find a way to mix it up. Or if your audio is not syncing properly because the, the video recorded too late or too early, the audio cut off. You can see a boom mic in the shot. All of these issues I came over with and I had to deal with them somehow. Uh, and, and that's pretty much what I have what I've done with Cycle as, as a film. It's, it's something that I've learned. It's an experience. Whether or not the film is good is not my problem, but I'm proud of it. I am very proud of what I've achieved and uh, I'm proud of the people who worked on it with me because they had no experience in this. They were They were blind as I was when I walked into this. I mean, I had experience with YouTube, uh, with a lot of these short, short skits. I've done a lot of them in my past. You can see them in Newtonian Entertainment. That's what my previous channel was called. Uh, and before that, Adrian Roshan One, my very, very first channel I made back in 2010 or is it 11? I'm not sure. 
Um, that one had a lot of uh, interesting skits. That was quite funny. I made a lot of videos unboxing Beyblades and all that. Uh, so, so my history of filmmaking and videography and uh, this, this kind of editing, you know, this media, media market area, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's in my ballpark. It's, it's kind of like second home to me because it's something that I'm, that I'm used to. It's my passion. It's what I've been doing. I've learned this all by myself. I had no teacher really. I made a YouTube account by myself when I was like seven, I think. And then, uh, wait, was I seven in 2011? No, I was nine. Uh, so when I was nine years old, I made my very first YouTube account. I uploaded videos. I made videos from there. Uh, I went on to do some awesome stuff. Uh, those might not be considered as achievements, but they are milestones that I would like to take into consideration when I'm going further, further with my career or into my life in the future because these stuff uh these things are what define me as who i am uh even my worst moments my worst failures like getting kicked out of a, a drama exam last minute oh boy that's a story to tell yeah actually you know what i i will i will tell that story uh in a, in a future podcast episode uh, please do remind me if you would like to know how that happened that was uh that was an interesting one but anyways, uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of stuff has happened, like just like anyone else, any normal person would have things happen, ups and downs. They're, they're bound to happen. But how you face them, how you move forward, how you grow from them is what truly matters. And that is the biggest test of character, of, uh, of personality, and most of all, your humanity. Yeah, who you are as a human. Uh, you know, that's what really brings it, brings it down to. Whatever we do, wherever we go, whatever heights you reach, uh, whatever awards you achieve, uh, just don't forget your roots. That's going to be the main thing that uh, I have learned. It's uh, don't forget your roots, no matter where you go. Because here and then, uh, there are a lot of people out there. Like, for instance, Keanu Reeves is a great example. He, he's, he is a humble and down-to-earth man, as, as many people have, uh, have, have said. I mean, I personally don't know him, know him so I, I can't vouch for that. But with what he's what what he what he's done, his actions, what they've told is that he is indeed a very humble and down to earth person, um, and and that's the that's the kind of person you would you'd want to be. You know that those are the kind of people that that would make a huge difference in the world. Uh, something reminded me actually. I was talking with my cousin the other day. Um, I'm not sure if I should say his name. I'm not sure if he's comfortable with it, so I'm not going to bother. But uh, he, he was talking to me about how he has issues with, uh, you know, thinking too much, overthinking, uh, you know, just not doing something because you might think it's going to go wrong or something's going to happen. I'm not good at it. See, I, I've been through the same thing. Uh, there was a point in my life where I had extreme anxiety. Um, I think I've, I've mentioned this to a few of my really close friends. But uh, during my GCSE exams, I, I, I was hit by a wave of, of, uh, of mental health. I, I, uh, I, m I might not have shown it out loud or out in person, but I was not in a good place. I, I kind of was introduced to this new thing called anxiety. And, uh, and I personally, I myself found it quite taboo because I was raised in a culture where mental health is not necessarily a, a thing that people consider as, as a proper health problem you know what i mean it's it's not something that people consider as oh you're sick having having a mental health is not considered being sick and i'm not saying mental health is is considered a sickness it's not but uh rather a state of mentality where you are more vulnerable really uh so i i was very very afraid petrified even of my exams of of how this would happen it's an entirely new world to me uh, and and it kind of affected my results. And I I mean, I wouldn't say I did bad. I didn't. But I didn't do as, as well as, as I could have, as much as I knew I could have. Um, and that's a regret that will live with me forever. And uh, ever since that happened, I never really got it back because I realized afterwards that uh, th these kind of stuff happen early on, so it doesn't happen in the future. I, I kind of believe in the saying, everything happens for a reason. Because to me, if there is no reason that we're on here on this earth, then there is no reason to life. You know, there's no purpose. We give purpose to our own life, sure. But if there is no reason to anything, then there is no reason to anything. You know what I mean? You can just do whatever you want. And uh, you can call it anarchy. You can call it freedom. 
uh, it is what it is. And so that is my uh, that is my belief. That is my intuition uh, with 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 this with this in life. So uh, just move on. Don't be too afraid to live. Overthinking. Everyone's gonna overthink. Uh, that's why you have a brain to think. If anything, thinking is overthinking will be good for you. It it helps you evaluate almost every perspective you can think of. But at the same time, don't let that stop you from achieving your dreams. Don't let that stop you from living your life. Because if you keep doubting yourself, you keep questioning yourself, you're never going to get anywhere. You're going to be sitting there in the same table or wait, you don't sit on tables, the same chair or same sofa or couch or whatever it is. And just wonder and wonder, you know, you're never going to get out and do something. Uh, thinkers are, are necessary in our world, but we also need people who are who are doers. Yeah, we need idealists, we need thinkers, uh, and most importantly, we need people who execute those ideas. So if you can't be a doer, at least do your part by being a thinker. You know, uh, so, so yeah, that's pretty much what I wanted to say or address in my first podcast. That was really about my cousin, really. If, if you are listening to this, and I hope you are, this, this was for you. If I couldn't answer your question that day, I was in my camp. I was kind of busy with my work. I was just popping in and out of Snapchat and I wasn't able to uh, finish our conversation. And I think it was quite late for you. Or was it in the morning? I'm not entirely too sure. But anyway, uh, entertainment section. I think y'all should know about this. Dune just came out. I heard Dune was pretty bad from some people, but apparently it's not according to Twitter. And I am not too sure what to believe. I'm just not going to watch it because I'm not I haven't read the book and uh, I don't think I should waste my money on that while I could go out and watch a Tamil film when Dibawali is coming next week. Wait, why did I just say Dibawali like so Americanized, man? That is that. Oh, my God, that hurts. OK, I'm going to say it properly one more time. Diwali. Oh, no, I did it again. Anyway, Diwali is coming <laughs> next week. And uh, uh, Tamil film is coming over, so I'm going to go and watch that. At the same time, Eternals from Marvel Studios is coming out. And that's going to be a game changer as it's the first film of Phase 4 uh, for people who, who are quite intrigued and are uh, well prepared or well 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 read on the Marvel Cinematic Universe. That's going to be quite important. And it's going to be a build up to uh, Spider-Man No Way Home, which is going to be quite cool. Uh, a lot of leaks are going on. Don't want to expose anything, obviously. I don't want to get killed by some nerd fanboys of, of Marvel and then be like, you spoiled the show, we spoiled the movie. Uh, yeah, I, I'm just not going to bother doing that. If you want to know the spoilers, go on Twitter, type in Spider, Spider, Spider-Man, No Way Home spoilers, and you'll find it yourself. Again, uh, disclaimer alert, I did not say that. You did not listen. And uh, don't add me, okay? Yeah. Anyway, guys, I think that's going to be the end of the very first podcast episode of Masala Chai with your boy, Adrin. I think I'm gonna have to work on the name, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. It sounds it sounds pretty good, um, but yeah, that's pretty much it, people. Uh, please make sure to rate, comment, subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. If you're listening to this on Spotify, please make sure to like this Spotify playlist. Please do uh, share it with your friends. Uh, go ahead and and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Spotify and don't stalk my Spotify listening playlists because they're mostly going to be all Indian songs. But, uh, but yeah, yeah, power to, to, uh, uh, I was going to say something, but I just don't remember what it is. You know what? I think this is a great time to end the podcast. Anyways, guys, I'll see you guys on next week on another awesome episode where I'll explain to you a bit about my army life and how it is to be living in, uh, Singapore doing the national service two years of L. Anyway, as always. Like I said, stay safe, be awesome.